Let's talk about the very first thing that I do after I wake up and get my day started is drink AG1. AG1 is the daily foundational nutritional supplement that supports whole body health. I drink it literally every single day and I gave AG1 a try because I was tired of taking so many different supplements and I wanted a single solution that supports my entire body and covers my nutritional basis every single day. I wanted better gut health, which I have, a boost in energy. It's great for your immune system. And I hated taking all the different pills and vitamins. You guys should see my cabinet. Literally one whole cabinet is filled with pills and vitamins. I no longer need to use all those. When I drink AG1 in the morning, it feels like I'm unstoppable and ready to take on my day. It feels like I'm doing something good for my body. AG1 was designed with ease in mind so you can live healthier and better without having to complicate your routine. And let's face it, life is already complicated enough. Let's make things simple and easy here. And if you wanna take ownership of your health, try AG1 and get a free one year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash booth. That's two O's in there. That's drinkag1.com slash booth. Check it out, you're gonna love it. We are back in the booth. My name's Sean Booth. And to my left today, she is wearing jeans, t-shirt, and snakeskin shoes. Moccasins. What do you call those? I actually don't know, but I would really prefer you not call them moccasins, <laughs> if I'm being honest. It's not sort of slip-on shoe. All right, slip on snake cat. We got slip on snake cat in the building. We are back. Hopefully you guys are having a fantastic day. We're having a great day and we're just gonna start off with this. We have to do it. I apologize. It's all anybody can talk about. It's all you can see when you scroll on social media. Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey, snake cat. Yeah. I mean. What about them? What, what about them? Everywhere you go. I came into this studio and you and Andrew were talking about Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift. I feel like I can't escape it. It's it, it's only been, I mean, today is what, Tuesday? So it's been two days since that game that she went to. I think I know more about Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift in the last two days than I have in the last 33 years of my life. It's like every business is doing an article on it too. You scroll Instagram and it's like, GQ and it's like here's how Travis Kelsey you know got Taylor Swift or it's like women's health like mm -hmm. it's like work out like Taylor I'm like everything right now is those two anything Taylor Swift touches turns to gold and a money opportunity and I read somewhere that Travis Kelsey jersey sales went up overnight 400 percent and his Social media followers went up over 400,000. Oh, I didn't see that. But yeah, yeah, I mean, I believe it. Like she, I don't know what she does. She possesses some sort of magic. And now he's within her, her casting spell. So good luck to him. So when these people, it's obviously Swifties that rush out and buy his jersey. That was, I mean, not I don't NFL know that, guys. <laughs> listen, I don't know that anybody's ever. <sighs> mm. I mean, they call I her they call her mother is what they call Taylor Swift. Oh, I have so many things to say about this, but I will get fucking lit up if I say. I'm Let's like, hear it. Nobody's ever accused Swifties of being mentally stable. Let's just start there. Those people, they are obsessed with her. They crowded to a point of like safety concern outside the stadiums that she would perform in to the point where people who were in the stadiums could not get in or out. And there was like a whole team that had to put together new laws that you couldn't come and creep on this girl. Like she'll say, I had a bagel for breakfast this morning. There are 17 different online platforms that are now discussing the bagel and what Easter egg she's hiding for the next song and album release by 9 a.m. that morning. And bagel sales skyrocket. Right, it's insane. And like, listen, please do not twist my words. I respect what Taylor Swift is doing. I don't know what the fuck it is, but it's working. And it's like, my girl, hell yeah. Talk about a businesswoman. She, like I said, everything she touches turns to gold. Do I understand it? No. Do I think it's a little weird? Yeah, I think it's a little weird, but it is what it is. And I feel like 
it's harmless. If people are obsessed with Taylor Swift, it's like, okay, you could be obsessed with way worse things. Yeah, it is harmless. It is crazy though. I, I mean, there's so many artists out there that I feel like have more talent. Oh God, I'm going to get You're going to get roasted. Yeah, sorry, I'm going to get. I gotta, no, but no. okay. So here's the thing. Right? Yes. Okay. I do agree with you that I think if we were just comparing skill to skill, mm -hmm. there are arguably stronger singers. There are definitely stronger dancers. She is fashionable. She's beautiful. She's cute. And she is talent. But the thing that you cannot pin down for Taylor Swift is that she has the ick. The it factor. Is the it factor that she's just like the girl next door? Yes. And it's, she's relatable. Her, they, she's grown up with millennials and now she's grown up with the power of social media and she has what the intangible. She, that's what I'm saying. If you compare the talent to talent, no, I don't think she's number one, but she is the mixed bag and she is all of the things that specifically women, I feel like, especially my age, I'm the same age as Taylor. She is the representative of like all of the girls who maybe never felt like they fit in or maybe the girls that right. were the popular girls or anything in between. Like she hits every market of women. She's got that deep rooted connection with yes. these ladies. It's her songwriting. I mean, she's a fantastic songwriter. She is. And I think all of that combined and just right place, right time and making smart moves, like talking about all of her boyfriends, ex-boyfriends and all of that and that's all relatable for women. And she capitalized on it. She's doing great. Yeah. And I feel like her songs too, there's uh, a few phases to her songs. When I listen to them at first, I'm like, oh, this song is terrible. <laughs> yeah. And then I listen to it again, like second, third time. I'm like, oh, that's not that bad. And then all Fourth, of a sudden. Fifth, I know every lyric. I'm <laughs> singing it and I'm playing at the gym. It just like grows on you. It's, it's fascinating. But I do think you have a good point that she is very well connected to these women and a much stronger way than just being an artist and a performer. A hundred percent agree. I have also heard uh, with people that I work in the country music industry with, obviously that's where Taylor started. And to this day, um, programmers, program directors, PDs, all these people um, still have very high remarks of the way Taylor interacted with them, with their children, with anybody that worked in their building. Very respectful, very kind. A lot of thank you letters, handwritten notes, going above and beyond what an average artist would in order to ensure a good personal relationship with the people that do control your radio career. And I've heard rumors, and I feel like they're not rumors because they're coming straight from sources, but when Taylor switched to pop music, she did not forget about those country programmers. Mm -hmm. And those country programmers' children still got tickets to the pop Taylor Swift concerts. And that just obviously goes a long way for people. I feel like people who feel appreciated will go out of their way to do more for you. Right. And I think Taylor is the queen of making sure everybody around her feels appreciated. And so she has a badass team. They go above and beyond for her. And she's able to put on three shows, back-to-back -back stadium sellouts, the way she has this whole year. Yeah. And I think that's why you can't hate on her. Like, I don't hate on her at all. Right. I do think she's awesome. I don't understand what now I do understand why people love her so much but you've never heard anything negative about her ever and we're in music city yep. nashville tennessee where she was born and raised right grew up here or moved here from somewhere yeah i mean she but came at here a young age totally and, and never a bad thing uh -uh. you hear bad things about almost every other artist around here <laughs> yeah. so that's uh impressive too it is that's what i'm saying it's now i mean i did not work in country music when taylor was coming up i'm saying these stories have now lasted however many years that she's been out of country music mm -hmm. and from people that I trust. It's not like they're going to be like, why would they lie to me about that? You know what I mean? Yeah. I want a Taylor Swift scandal. That's what I need to be fully on board. I don't know that you would find one because I feel like Taylor Swift could literally kill someone and Swifties would be like, it's okay, queen. We got this. Yeah. Just, it's going to be a fire next album. Like they wouldn't even care. Yeah. And like when you say the Easter egg thing where she's, dropping hints but yeah. not really they're just always looking for hints i think no i think she's doing it okay so the I other do. night travis kelsey was with her you saw that awkward mm -hmm. video of them like walking next not to holding each other. hands not holding and then hands travis is like looking like this at the guy like yeah what's up and he's got that weird that's, crazy outfit wait that's how you interpret it the little bit yeah. english interpreted that look yeah, he walked around the corner and then he was like looking around to see who, who was looking at him, being like, yeah, I got Taylor Swift with me. That's how I interpreted that look. What mm, did you think? Interesting. I feel like 
he was side eyeing the guy recording it, like, don't record this. She no, likes to no. be private. No, come on. Yeah, I feel no. like he was, it was a little more he judgmental. One hundred percent, being like, "You better be recording this right now." This whole thing is a move. Well, yeah, I mean, this I, isn't this isn't a romance. I one hundred percent agree with that. I, I am yes. I yeah. think it is a move, and I think for Travis Kelsey, it's a trying to reach the pinnacle and get the unattainable, the most famous person in the world. I think the relationship, whatever it is, it's not going to last long, and. Um, it, it's a win-win for both of them right now. Everybody's talking about them. You just we just read off the numbers of Travis Kelsey's now new fame, and yeah, I think it's a hundred percent a move. I don't think he's. Uh, I think he's going to do something stupid to screw it up. Okay, <laughs> that's my I mean, take. I, I don't think you're far off. I definitely think this is more of a publicity stunt than true feelings. But I also feel like, what do we know? It's still very new. He he publicly shot his shot on his podcast. Right. You know how this all like started. Yeah. So then someone talked to someone who talked to someone. And I got to say, if he publicly shot his shot and Taylor didn't take him up on at least going to a game, I would judge her. That man is fine. If he publicly shot his shot with anyone, I'd be like, go ahead, girl. Sit in that box with his mom. See, what if, what if they actually have a lot in common? Do I think that this is like a budding romance? Not really, but- who are we to judge? There, he's thirty three and single and hot and good at what he does. She's thirty three and single and hot and great at what she does. Are they both thirty three? Yeah. Okay. They're my age. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I just think that um, it is definitely a look at me, look at us type deal. Not a romance. They're both very cheesy, right? They're both kind of corny. Very. Travis is like. Yes. Travis loves the attention, craves the attention. Everybody always kind of knocks on him for that. He's an amazing football player, but everybody's always like, he acts and he tries way too hard to be like Gronk, where Gronk is just Gronk. And everybody loves Gronk because he doesn't try to be funny. He doesn't try to be goofy. He just is who he is, where it's like, it seems very forced from Kelsey. Okay. I didn't know that. I always saw him being goofy and I thought that that's just who he was. Yeah. I don't Maybe know. It is. We don't know. Yeah. We're sitting here on a podcast I'd like just judging the crap that. out of them, but <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. And I do think it's going to end. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to say it terribly. I hope they have a long lasting life together with 14 kids. Here's the thing is that even if. So I, I feel like the Swifties don't necessarily want this to last because they want whatever music is going to come out of this experience for Taylor, because, you know, she's going to write about it. Well, then they wouldn't be real fans of Taylor if they didn't want to see her happy. They oh want music from her instead. Booth gag me. Get over <laughs> yourself. Okay. I understand what you're saying, but I'm just saying, like, I think everybody is in it for the spectacle, not necessarily the romantic aspect of it. I think all women, could, I would be willing to bet, even people who are not attracted to men, know that Travis Kelsey is a hot man. Yeah. And so everybody who's looking at Taylor, like, go ahead, girl, get you some. See what happens. I don't think anybody's invested like, don't break her heart. I think they're just like, oh, this is fun. This is literally a shiny object for us to pay attention to. I do have to say, I feel sorry for NFL fans because now Swifties have infiltrated that. And I feel like that was like the last standing thing that they hadn't yeah. taken. But here we go. Yeah. If you're looking at it as from like a physical standpoint on like the scale of hotness, I think Kelsey's on the hotter scale than Taylor Swift. Um, I don't know. I mean, okay, I could see that. I feel like Taylor, like you said, is the girl next door. So I feel like she yeah. has a very specific look to her, but I think Taylor's beautiful. I do know that Travis Kelsey has a reputation for being into women who are a bit thicker. He needs uh needs somebody a little more he needs more of a bad girl. Okay. I think she's too good. I, I do I do think their reputations are drastically different but i also feel like opposites attract i'm glad you said that okay scientific study okay facts opposites do attract but they don't last as long as people who have things in common with each other i would totally believe that and i feel like i don't know if you made it up or not but if you did congrats to you i believe it no i heard it on a, a book <laughs> i read it recently. on the internet so it's true yeah it was true it was on the internet okay so. Here we are 15 minutes later talking about Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. Wait, hold on. What I, is the, <laughs> obviously we don't have anything going the, on in our it, lives. It's the it factor. I'm telling you, wait, I want to go back. So opposites attract. Why do you think opposites attract, but don't last as long? Because at the end of the day, you can, you know, 
be attracted to somebody who's different than you. It's kind of fun. It's exciting. It's new. But to live a long, happy, healthy life, you guys have to be interested in the same things and find some common ground where if you're completely opposites on everything, you're going to start button heads after that initial, you know, factor is done. The initial lust. Yeah. Or like sexual attraction. Yeah. That's fair. I feel like that's 100% accurate. Wow, look at you. <sighs> uh, write that down. Okay. I never said that. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> First of all, that's not true. I give you compliments when you deserve them. Thank you. Uh, flip on snake shoe cat, whatever <laughs> I called it at the beginning of the podcast. <laughs> Last thing here. Okay. The Easter eggs. Did you see his outfit? Uh, wh Which one? The one that they were leaving in? Like the ugly... Looked like a painted white, the one that he was walking when down. When he the, gave the side eye. Yes. I mean, yes, I saw it, but I wasn't really diving into that. I was. Oh, all the Swifties and everybody else. Of dove course into they it. were. They were like waiting outside to see her in a popcorn machine or something like that. I'm like, you guys have got to chill. <laughs> I'm trying to give you the benefit of the doubt, but every time I'm just like, Swifties aren't that bad. A new thing comes out and it's just like, 30 year old women stalking a 30 year old woman. Right. I also don't get the popcorn thing. I mean, that's a whole different level of No, because that's how she gets into her concert. Which is dumb. I'm not saying Everybody it's, knows it's nobody can get to her. And you have eight security gar guards walking her up a stage in a big box that says like cleaning supplies. Yes. That they're just rolling onto the stage right before the show with a broom. It's like, why can't you just they, walk out they there? They love it. They love it. I don't know. I'm not saying it's dumb or not. I'm just saying that that's like her thing. Okay. So his outfit, Travis Kelsey wears 1989 inspired suit. So his outfit is, um, wore a 1989 bedroom painting matching set piece tonight leaving arrowhead with taylor swift very timely for the hashtag 1989 taylor's version so people were wondering if she had that outfit picked out for him but yeah it's a 1989 bedroom painting it's i don't name think of the i don't think they're at a point in their relationship where she's picking out his clothes ladies i mean the whole world saw it why not you know i mean you're right strategic. i guess i could be wrong and also if you so you leave the <laughs> You, <laughs> you, you leave flustered. You leave the sweet in a popcorn box, but you, then you're just rolling down the street with your top off on a convertible. Like you everybody don't look at know. Me. You don't know that she was in the popcorn box. Swifties made that. No, no, they do know because they didn't see. Nobody got footage of her walking out. She went in and never came out. That doesn't mean that there wasn't a back entrance to the there suite. There wasn't a back entrance into the suite. You were there? Yeah. You were there? You've been to Arrowhead Stadium? You know all of the exits and entrances of every suite in Chiefs Kingdom? You, you think that there's like a magical elevator that pops up from yes. the bottom of the floor? I happen to know that there are a lot of buildings that have specific suites that hold VIPs and celebrities, and they have more than one exit and entrance specifically for people Not in those like suites. Swifties. Not in those suites. Not You've been suites. there? You've been I've Arrowhead been in Stadium? Suites. You've been in suites. You I've tell been... me there's a, a... No. You know that's tr not true. Okay. <laughs> you, she went outside in the popcorn box. That was weird. I think that she does it... I think she does those things for her fans because they fucking eat it up. And, and cool. here we are I, I would probably talking do it about too. it. So I'm it not, works. I'm not hating on her. I love it. She is a marketing genius or whoever has helped her develop these things. And then now she is absolutely hook, line, and sunk every... Swifty, and they eat it up. Like I said, you could kill someone and they'd be like, it's okay, girl. We got your back. Do you think she's more popular and famous than Michael Jackson was? Yes. At the rise of his career? Yes. I don't know. Okay. Well, I do. And the answer is yes. Strictly because she has way more access to people due to social media and the internet. Yeah. So her reach is quadruple the amount, more than quadruple the amount. Of what Michael Jackson had. Yeah. And I guess Michael Jackson wasn't as relatable. He wasn't as relatable. And then he he really took a sharp turn there. <laughs> so I really, you know, say what you want about Taylor Swift. I hope she stays on the straight and narrow because I think she's a good person and she deserves it. Yeah. I think she's on the straight and narrow for the rest of her life. And I think that's why Travis has not been uh, too straight and narrow. But yeah. I think she's a little vanilla for him. There you go. There's a word without uh, me saying it. Okay. Yeah. Feel like it. <laughs> but hey, thoughts and prayers. We're rooting for them. Oh boy. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I'm rooting for them, but go ahead. 
Hey, yeah. if if you had the opportunity for Travis Kelsey, you wouldn't say no. If I had the opportunity for Travis Kelsey, yeah. I would say Or if you had the opportunity no. for Taylor Swift. Oh, yeah. I mean, I would for right. sure be yeah. like, yeah, let's go on a date. Right. Let's That's what, what I'm saying. Theirs just about. happens to be very publicized. I don't think Travis Kelsey would ask Taylor Swift out on a date if she wasn't Taylor Swift. Jesus. No. Okay. I, okay. <laughs> See, here's the thing, though, is that I hate this. I hate this comparison because people, and namingly you, have done this as well. Let's say someone who is famous and rich and a whatever, it could be NFL player, it could be a singer, it could be whatever it may be, is not exactly the most physically attractive person. And you slash a lot of people are quick to be like, oh, well, if he wasn't Sean Booth, if he wasn't Morgan Wallen, if he wasn't Travis Kelsey, you would never give him the opportunity. Right. You're right. Yeah. Because that's part of who he is. Why does that have to be separate? Like, what someone does for a living and what they bring to the table because is part of who they are. Yeah, so, yeah, to you're a right. certain point. But you got no. a guy like, I think, no. I, I Let me tell you, Travis Kelsey could be cleaning out my gutters and I'd be like, hey. Exactly, right? Because <laughs> so he that's is attractive. A guy, exactly. Would you say the same about Morgan Wallen? No, he is not my type. But guess what? Even though he's rich and famous and all stuff, I still wouldn't want okay, to go out with him. Okay, but there are people who do that strictly because he's Morgan Wallen. They could have seen sure. him on a Friday but night that doesn't down mean on Broadway everyone. before he was famous, and they probably wouldn't have gone up to him. But now that he's famous and rich and has money, and yes. now they want to. Yes. Yeah. That's part of who he is now, though. It is part, exactly, yes. to an extent. Yeah. But so, do yes. they really like Morgan because of Morgan, or do they like him because of songs? No, they like him because of his bank account and because of the notoriety they'd get and all the Instagram followers. So you're... Yes, I'm saying that that exists. But what I'm saying is that there is somewhere in between that, yeah, I am attracted to him because he's a of course, cardiothoracic yeah. a surgeon. Of, Fuck yeah. Yes, the attraction. Yes. You're attracted to somebody's personality, what they do. And mm -hmm. that is just like a whole big like, oh, fuck, that's a lot going yes. on that is very appealing to people. Yes. I'm yeah. just saying you can acknowledge that it doesn't have to just be you're a social climber if you're into someone who's famous and rich. Yeah, I can acknowledge that. Okay, that's all I wanted from yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I can acknowledge that. I'll take that. that. Wow, I look at us. I can also say that there's a lot of people. Oh, hell yeah. There's yeah. a, I mean, you know how many songs are written about those girls? I've met those girls. I've seen them. And they don't, listen, they just want the story. They do. The experience. Go home and tell their friends. Oh, yeah, I've met them too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you have, buddy. Probably differently than I have, but. <laughs> Who's more famous, Kim Kardashian or Taylor Swift? Uh, that's a good question. I think that, I don't know. What are their Instagram followers? I feel like we could just go with hard statistics. I saw it today. Somebody was talking about, um, I think it was the Bussin' Boys mm -hmm. on Instagram. Will was talking about the NFL being bigger than Taylor Swift. <laughs> I agree with him. And then they pulled up their Instagram accounts and it was like, Taylor has 279 million and it was like 27 million to the NFL. Anybody, like she had a couple hundred million more followers, but anybody who works or plays within the NFL thinks that it's the whole world. World champions. It's a world massive, champions. It's massive, America. Massive. The Super Bowl is crowned world champions. Who are we competing against across the world? That's oh, wait, the we're selfish not. selfish Americans in us. That's it's everything. That's it's NFL. M MLB. It's the World Series when you're just playing. But the, yes, you but know? you brought up the NFL. I don't care about the MLB. I'm talking about this. So, yes, I think Taylor Swift is much bigger than the NFL. Ooh. I would like for you to pan the stadiums on any given Sunday when a team who is not very good is playing and look at all the empty seats, and then I'd like you to go back and look at the video footage of Taylor Swift in that exact same stadium three nights in a row, balls to the wall, super sold out, and tell me that the NFL is not as big as Taylor Swift. Yeah, but or wait, vice there's versa. another 30 stadiums across America at the same time with, that, that, that are filled. No. They're in the NFL on a Sunday. Okay. 20, 16, I don't know, whatever, 16. <laughs> Numbers are hard. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I see what you're saying, but I don't think that that negates my argument. Taylor Swift is also one person. The NFL is a bunch of white men that think they know better. So we have a lot of power, a lot of money, a lot of greed, a lot of, a lot of ego that goes behind the NFL. A lot more years. She's only 33. She's only been doing this for 15 years. Yeah. The NFL has been around for a really long time. Right. So I feel like we're comparing apples to oranges.
So she's been around, let's say, one eighth of the time the NFL has, and she has 100 million more followers. That's true. I'd say she's bigger than the NFL. But not bigger than Kim Kardashian. Um, I don't know. I was going to say, so Kim, I feel Kim like Kim Kardashian has, has 364 million followers. I think Kim is just a different lane. I don't want to compare them because I feel like they bring different things to the table. I think Kim is more widespread known and she is in fashion and now she's in politics and she has a very famous family and all of that combined makes her more of a powerhouse. But I think Taylor is a little more... Uh, like she's got quality over quantity with her people that follow her. You know what I'm saying? Like Swifties are ride or die. I don't know that Kim's fan base is as ride or die as Taylor. Right, I'm just talking about pure quantity of fans. And I think the world. Kim has more fans. Yeah, like if I was Travis Kelsey, I'd be shooting my shot at Kim instead of Taylor. Like, what are you nuts? Um, well, I don't know about that, but yeah. I think it kind of just started as like Travis thought she was cute and see if it worked. And it did. And Good it did. Him. Yeah. Yeah. Good for him. I don't know that there's really many other people in the NFL that that would have worked. Um, Cause I think Travis Kelsey is now, like I said before, I think he's just solidifying his place in pop culture. He's more than just an NFL player. Now, now he's a radio personality with his podcast. He's becoming a fashion icon being on the front of GQ and all these crazy outfits he's wearing. He's playing in the NFL, and now he's going to date arguably the biggest pop star of our generation. Yeah, just had a documentary on Netflix or whatever with his brother. Yeah. And he is the best at his position on arguably the best team with the best quarterback in the world, Patrick Mahomes. So yeah, he's, he's got a good. He's got a good, good he's gig a going. Great season of life. Good for yeah. him. Yeah. I do. I laughed at some of the Eagles fans were putting, uh, the, I guess, Travis Kelsey's brother plays for the Eagles. Yes. And then there's someone else on the Eagles with the last name Swift. So they were standing next to each other and it said Kelsey DeAndre Swift. And they Swift. said, this is the only uh, Swift-Kelsey duo we're interested in. And it was just like the Eagles logo behind it. Yeah, I think a lot of it too is angry NFL guys right now who are like, can't we just have our NFL and not have to scroll and see Taylor everywhere? I mean, I kind of agree with them, but I also tell them to get over themselves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think the NFL's got terrible fans. I'm now going into dad mode. I'm like, why would I ever want to bring my kid to a game and sit in the bleachers when all it is is drunk dudes fighting with each other? You see videos every weekend, and I feel like I'm getting to the point where I'm like, all right, Barstool, just stop showing these fights because I feel like it puts thoughts in people's brains where then they go to the games and then they get in fights. There was a guy who got killed what? At Gillette Stadium in New England last weekend. In the bleachers, got in a fight, got knocked out, got hit in the head. He was a dad, and he's dead. <gasps> I did not hear that. Yeah. That is- Dead. No, I mean, I think, listen, I have a lot of thoughts on the NFL, and I'm not sure that I should air them publicly, but- Whenever you say, I'm not sure if I want to share them publicly, that means share them right now on the podcast. I guess what I'm saying is what could, okay, fine. You want to know what my opinion of the NFL is Yeah. and their fans? How could we have a benchmark to hold the group of fans to whatever level of decency that we think is appropriate when the men who are on the field making millions of dollars True. are pieces of shit? How many people playing in the NFL right now are making more money than everyone listening to this podcast combined that beat their wives, that have killed someone, that steal, like all this shit. Yeah. And then they get another contract and someone, again, the rich white dude who's running the NFL, who's not bigger than Taylor Swift, decides, you know what? He's really good at his position. So here's another contract and we'll just sweep that under the rug. Yep. So how can the people who are playing the game that you're coming to watch be pieces of shit, but you're supposed to be a good person? When you're busting your ass working one, two, three jobs to make the money to buy the ticket to get there, you've been stressed all week and now you're going to get a little rowdy with your friends. One thing leads to another. I mean, I'm not saying you should kill people in the stands. That's a little aggressive. But that feels a little unfair. We're going to hold our fans to a standard that we can't even hold the people we're paying the million dollar contracts to. Yeah, I mean, I agree 100%. What I'm thinking, though, is that you should not get to the point where you need to cause physical harm on somebody because they are fans or you're yelling at each other about grown men mm -hmm. who are on the field playing a game. 100%. You are and correct. And you are now fighting over them. And guess what? Whatever you're fighting over and the teams, they don't give a f about you. No. And like that dude is getting paid millions of dollars. He's going to lose a game. He's going to be upset for the most part. Most of them are going to be like, whatever. 
you know. He's going to get in his Bentley and drive home. And drive home. Yes, I think you're... 100% 100% correct because I've never understood. You ever hear someone in the NFL, they're like a really big fan. They're like, oh, you know, we really, we killed them. That was great. It was a great game. Then all of a sudden it's like, oh, they lost. They played like shit. I'm like, oh, all we, of a sudden we <laughs> won. They play like shit. So you were on the team last week, but you aren't anymore. Yeah. That's so weird. I didn't see you out on the field. Were you the water boy or what? Oh, uh, no. You were at home like the rest of us. Get over yourself. I, I, I mean, and I completely understand of being a fan and supporting your teams and uh, but what cracks me up is people in the stands who yell. Yes. Oh, it's my favorite. It's like, you I ever think been... they know what to do. It's <laughs> like, I was at, I was running on the track the other day and there was a soccer game going on and this crazy mom was screaming at the top of the lawn. She kept on saying, kick it in the goal, kick it in the goal. That's, yeah, that's like, the yeah, goal. I, yeah. They, they, they understand. They're yeah. trying. <laughs> yeah, we They're got trying that. to put it in the goal. <laughs> I hear that a lot uh, at Preds games here in Nashville. I yeah. grew up in a hockey family. Yeah. And so. Score. I'm, yes. I'm not saying that I know every rule to hockey ever, but that is my most comfortable mainstream sport that I feel like I could teach you the yeah. sport of hockey. And I'll go to a Preds game. Obviously not a big hockey town, but it has become an attraction on Broadway and all of those things. Yeah. And I will sit in the stands and they'll be like, at the blue line and they're like shoot it and i'm like that don't shoot it don't listen to deborah she doesn't know what she's talking about yeah they're like in the uh, i'm like oh that's not how that works like oh my gosh why didn't he just punch him i'm like oh lord have mercy yeah i think there needs to be like an age cut off like if you're under 14 years old yell whatever you want get into no, it no there's adults jerseys. that would fight 14 year olds i mean <sighs> there are there's some Piece of shit people that would oh, yeah, get in fight doubt with that, but I'm saying teenagers. we need to have like a cutoff. I think that everybody should just take a deep breath and realize that it's literally a game. Yeah, but for a lot of people, that is like you said, they work yeah. nine to five every week. I to mean, indulge. It's their hobby. Just like they enjoy our females enjoy Taylor Swift. These guys enjoy Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, but at Swifty's concert, nobody's dying. Nobody's getting in fights and getting too drunk. That's Everybody it's actually is the having they're the time of their friendship bracelets. Yes. They're having the time of their life. They're crying tears of joy. They're dancing. They're singing. They're hanging out with multiple generations within their family. It's a much different experience. Again, respect for Taylor. Not a Swifty, but I still respect her. All right. There we go. Speaking of drinking. Oh, let's talk about drinking. That's what we're going to talk about. <laughs> that's what I said. Speaking of drinking. Yeah. That's a hard, like. Boom, pivot. Well, yeah. Well, you were saying drinking in the stands of the NFL games. They get in fights. Someone died. Let's not do that. I have been sober now for almost a year. It's it's actually quite hilarious how life works out because I feel like Baby Booth is going to be born on my one-year sobriety. Oh, yeah. It's December 6th. Due date's December 12th. That's so, I mean, cute. it's like as soon as we found out, I'm like, baby's going to be born December 6th. Like, just that's just how life works sometimes. You had a little inkling of it? Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm pushing for December 6th then. I think that'd be cute. Yeah, it would be cute. <laughs> um, I haven't had really any cravings. The other day I went out and I saw like, no, I did have a craving. I was like, that beer looks really good. <laughs> so it got me thinking, and I wanted to ask you, final four Yeah. favorite drinks to have. Not that I'm going to have any drinks, but I've drank for a large part of my life. Okay. I'm talking from four, three, two to one, your favorite drink on like a certain occasion. Okay. I'll lead it off. Okay. Okay. Like number four for me is, uh, you know, I don't even feel proud saying this, but like a mimosa on a Sunday morning after you went out hard on Saturday night, mm -hmm. probably, you know, during the fall, getting ready for a day of football. But that first mimosa after you've been drinking all night and need something to help you out, mm -hmm. that's a good drink. That starts the shampoo effect yeah. for your Sunday fun day. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a good one. I do have to say. I did not, I don't have that one on my list, but I, my number four is um, the airport beer. And I want to be very specific because it's not just any airport beer. My favorite airport beer is when you are either meeting up, say I'm meeting my cousins at BNA, or I go, notoriously, my family travels 22 to 27 adults deep. We go on one trip a year. It's batshit insanity. Way too many people involved, but it's so much fun. Uh, this year we went to St. Croix, so we all met in Miami. And when everybody comes from all across the country and we get to the Miami terminal, that first hazy IPA that I have, I'm like, 
Yeah. This sounds like I'm going to lay on a beach for a week and tastes like I'm not going to have any responsibilities. And that is just a good place to be. Yeah. That airport beer is good. On the plane's good, too. Mm, that and altitude, though. Yeah. That'll get you. Or when you travel all day, you've been packing, you're stressed, you're trying to finish up work, and then you finally get to the destination, and then you have that drink, and you're like, I don't have to do shit for mm -hmm. a week. That's a good one, too. Number three, I had a good whiskey on the rocks at like a speakeasy. You're kind of dressed up, you got your lady with you, you got good music, and just sipping on a glass of whiskey. That's a good one. It's funny you say that because mine is oddly similar to your, my number three is specifically a Manhattan and or an old fashioned. I love those two drinks. I think I like old fashions a little more than Manhattans, sure. but I'm not gonna discriminate. Um, I just feel like those go hand in hand with like a nice event, a wedding, an anniversary party, some sort of event here in Nashville. And I love the feeling that comes, I feel like it's like sophisticated. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you yeah. don't drink, well, I don't drink Manhattans at a tailgate. You know what I mean? It's like a very Yeah, you're like high business level. on the outside, but you're partying on yes. the inside. And so are all your organs. I love yeah. that. Um, but I also love to order an old fashioned on a first date because I love to kind of gauge yeah. how someone reacts to it. Some guys are like, whoa, okay. I've had guys, that's a manly drink. They'll ask me, I'm like, yeah, just wait. The guy's um, like, I'll take a Shirley Temple. <laughs> yeah. You're like, No, oh, like if we go work. out for drinks, yeah. if like, we're, oh, would you like to grab a drink? I always order an old fashioned. Just, I feel like you can tell a lot about someone with what drink they order. And I also like to, like I said, gauge their reaction to me drinking a quote unquote manly drink. If you did that, if I went on a first date with you, yeah. you ordered a old fashioned, I'd be like, make it two. I like that. Yeah. And I feel like, I've gone on some pretty great dates that ultimately just ended with like, ugh, I just don't have the va va voom with you. But a lot of those dates were like that. Oh, that sounds good. I'll have one yeah. of those too. So then immediately I'm like, okay, this guy is not intimidated. Yeah. He's not judging me because I'm drinking something that he didn't expect me to drink. He's not gonna be the guy that's like, oh, she'll have the salad. Like, yeah, try that shit, buddy. <laughs> um, but I do feel like there have been times that it's kind of translated into as if we were to go on a first date, then it would just become friendship. It's like, yeah, yeah I mean, I like this guy. He's cool. Let's have Manhattans again. But like, you bring a date and I'll bring a date. Right. So I don't know. I just think that a Manhattan slash old fashioned has a lot of different pockets in my life. My number two, I have a during a blizzard snow in December, January, the middle of the winter and you have a Sam Adams winter lager. Ooh. And it's cold outside, you're stuck in your house. On one of those, you gotta freeze the mug. You freeze the mug yes. and it just tastes like winter. You might go outside, you might go and shovel the driveway. You never know. But, <laughs> you got a couple more, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> exactly, you know what I mean? Exactly, but the uh, old winter lager during the winter is a good one. Okay. Mine, uh, my next one is actually, very much weather-based as well, but the exact opposite. My number two is gonna be the first patio margarita when the sun starts coming out and it's a little warmer. You're gonna sit on a rooftop. Mine preferably will be spicy, but arriba, that gets oh, me going. Are we going. in Mexico now too? Hell yeah, that first rooftop drink when the sun has come out in winter has fucked off. That's my, I think that's my, I should have been my number one. I was going to say, what's going to be number one? No, number that? one is better, but that one, I just feel like everybody can relate to that. The sun comes out and you become a different person because we're, let's just face it, we're overcomplicated houseplants that need vitamin D and water and love and all those things. And when the sun comes out and you can feel it after you've been a pale, snake I don't even know, plant snake winter. plant all winter. Again, just a little bit of water on once a month. Yes. <laughs> and you're yeah. just like, Wow, I haven't felt like, joy in a couple boring weeks. As shit. Yeah, give me something else. I I mean, I know that like seasonal depression exists. I'm 100%. not an idiot, but my God, does it feel so, so real when that sun cracks through after the oh. winter? I'm just like, holy shit, I haven't been in a bad mood because of anything other than the sun sets at 3 p.m. and I'm sad. There's been weeks here in Nashville where it's just rainy and cloudy. Yes. You don't see the sun for like two or three weeks. Yeah. Like, what is going on here? I, I think that I didn't pay attention to, or maybe things have changed, I don't know. But we have had exceptionally gloomy summers, specifically yeah. summers, the past couple. Yes, there's the days that the sun comes out and it's 300 degrees and you could fry eggs on the sidewalk, but there's also so much gloom. Yeah. And I feel like I noticed it because I travel for work 
and I would come back and I see all of you guys out on boats all weekend living your life when I'm at a show. I come back Monday through Wednesday and it's like the set of twilight around here. And I'm like, this is depressing. Yeah. So spicy yeah. margaritas on a patio. I might go do that after this actually. My number one is very similar. Okay. I had a tasty wheat beer is always my go-to Yours during the so summer. Yours are so vague, Booth. Tasty wheat beer? Yeah, give, like us a, a... give me like a summer shandy. Okay, there we go. All right, mm -hmm. give me a, a blue moon. Mm -hmm. Throw an orange on there. Anybody who was like, oh, you like fruit in your beer? Yeah, hell yeah, it tastes good. Sorry, I like happiness. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm getting my fruits and I'm getting my alcohol, my toxins <laughs> at the same time. Uh, whether it's at the beach, you're going out in the lake, pontoon, mm -hmm on the boat, Ooh, boat you're about beer. to have a good day boat it's like beer. you got some good people with you you got some good music going on you have that first refreshing even though it's really not refreshing because it's dehydrating the shit out of you but you're like this is really refreshing <laughs> tastes good yeah that's my number one that shotgun boat beer yeah. i love a shotgun I, that's, I think that's the only place i actually shotgun beers is on a boat not because I want to, just because I'm mostly peer pressure to do so. Yeah, a lot of peer pressure. I'm not very good at it. I've never claimed to be good at it. And quite honestly, I don't want to be good at it. Right. But <laughs> I'll do it on a boat. Yeah, you will. Hell yeah. Um, my number one is the opposite of yours again. Mine is winter time. So we switched my number yeah. one. But my mom makes a fantastic white Russian. And I prefer mine tan Russian because it's a little less half and half. I can't be doing all that half and half. But it has become kind of uh, something that I really look forward to mm -hmm. when I come home. Like my mom and my aunt go balls to the wall for Christmas. I love Christmas. My yeah. parents have a beautiful like living room that looks up and there's all different. I don't know. You'd have to see a video of it for me to explain it. But we have at least 10 to 15 Christmas trees in our house. That'll give you a little benchmark of how much shit is going on so you sit by the fire it's nice and cozy my mom makes like a irish coffee so like a spiked coffee and i just prefer mine to be cold which is essentially a white russian but like my brother drinks it with me and my dad will come in it's just very cozy and like yeah. warm and it feels like the holidays for me you and that is christmas music in the background yes and it's just like i don't know we probably have national lampoon christmas vacation on because that's what i make my family watch on repeat and it's just a good feeling. And I feel like that drink, although we have white Russians when we get together often, the one at Christmas is just different. It just hits different and I love it. Now here's a question I have for you. Who's crazier, Swifties or people that have 10 to 15 Christmas trees in their house? <laughs> well, if you met my mother, <laughs> it might be up for debate. Um, but you know, let me just say, Apple doesn't even fall far. I think I'm, Apple's still on the tree for this instance. Yeah, you're a big Christmas girl. Hell yeah. Yeah. So are you. Yeah. I'm a Christmas guy. Yeah, yeah. you are. Yeah. I feel like I just. I love it. I want everyone to feel about Christmas the way I feel about Christmas. Yeah. I understand that not everybody has that experience. And the older I've gotten, the more I've witnessed it firsthand. That makes me so sad. I want to invite everybody to my house for Christmas. I want to buy everybody Christmas presents. And I want them all to feel like children for that, you know, three days of yeah. the holiday breakdown. Because it is my favorite and I'd love to share it. Yeah, because it kind of, for me, I feel like I'm getting some of that feeling back from when I was a little kid, mm -hmm. right? When yeah, it was so magical. Yeah, you're going to see Booth. Yeah. You're gonna well, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not even saying that. I'm just saying in years past where I try to get into it because I want to feel. Oh, but you haven't been. No, I mean, as you get older, I feel like the magic obviously becomes less and less. You got to find it in different ways. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I mean, obviously with the kid coming, that is very exciting because I feel like it's going to bring a lot of the magic back. But I too just started last year. I'm like, hey, let's have Christmas at my house. I want to do it every year in Nashville. So I love Christmas. I want to make it a big thing. And yeah, this year I'll be changing diapers. You will be. But I feel like by next Christmas of 24, the kid will be a little more alert and awake and actually involved in Christmas. And I think that will light a big old Christmas candle inside you. What was the best Christmas gift you ever got? Your favorite? Oh, wow. Um, that's a really hard question, and I don't even know. All right, we'll save it for Christmas time. <laughs> okay, podcast. I was like, I do not know. You've got a couple months to think about it. We'll do a Christmas podcast. I feel like a lot of my um, Christmas presents as of late have been very practical, but very what I wanted. Like one year, my parents paid for my January mortgage. That is not sexy, but let me tell you, it was helpful and it was awesome and yeah. it helped me. 
My dad, we talked about, gave me an empty styrofoam container for my eggs. He's going to help me free my egg. Again, not sexy, but very helpful. Yeah, hey. So those kind of things, I feel like I've really racked Appreciate up and I'm appreciative it. of more so than, you know, physical things. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we are coming up on the best part of the year. The burrs. We're already in it. The burrs. I've never heard that. What? But it's true. The yeah. burrs. The burrs. They're We're the coming best. up on the burrs. We're in the burrs. Welcome. Wow. Is yeah. this the first burr? It is. <laughs> it sure is. I've officially declared this podcast just going every which direction. Well, you walked in. Okay, let me tell everybody what happened. You walked in and you're like, I have no idea what we're going to talk about. Yeah. that's the And I was like, I'm good. He's like, okay, we're just going to start talking. So that's where we got. <laughs> this is what you get. This is unscripted. This is as I feel like as, as real as it can get. We have nothing planned. Yeah. I think is, I've said the F word 35 times. My grandmother's definitely going to yell at me, but whatever. Do you think we landed on the moon? <laughs> <laughs> I've had this discussion at the gym <laughs> all week, out of nowhere, seemingly. There's a lot of debate that we haven't landed on the moon, because why haven't we gone back? Did we not? Wait, who's arguing that we didn't? A lot of people. Why? Give me the reasons why we did it. Because we haven't gone back. Okay, that's it's fair. Been... That's a pretty good one, actually. <laughs> why haven't we gone back? Mm -hmm. I'm going to be completely honest. They were honest. recording it live from the moon in 1969? How'd that work? I wasn't there, man. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, There's a lot of people that say we didn't. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Up until this exact moment, I haven't really given landing on the moon much thought. That's why you're sitting there. I like to work your brain a little bit. Okay. You know, uh, I think that there's a possibility we haven't landed on the moon. And maybe they were just messing with us all because wasn't there something going on with other international affairs at the time? And yes. we were trying to race and get there first and whatever may happen. Correct. I don't know all of the specifics because it's been quite a few years since I've thought about this. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think there could be some truth to that because I think people maybe back in the day didn't have the opportunity to do independent research. So they just saw what they saw in the media and they were forced to believe it to some extent. And then, you know, once you put it in a history book, it's obviously truthful. Some conspiracy theories about it. We have shadows in the moon landing photos prove that the images were fake then you can't have a shadow. Another conspiracy, Apollo astronauts could not have survived the Earth's radiation field. Um, why are there no stars in the pictures of the NASA moon landings? The Apollo 11 US flag is waving in the wind, but there's no wind on the moon. If we really went to the moon in 1969, why have we never been back? <sighs> is it confirmed that we've never been back? Nobody's ever gone back to the moon at all? Is that confirmed, Andrew? Is yeah. it confirmed? I don't think we have. The, do you think we landed? Oh, on... yeah, yeah, yeah. We went, we went to the moon. All right. Think about how, that's like the people who are like, we have the cure for cancer. We just aren't giving it up because it's a multi-billion dollar business. Yeah, no, I actually believe that for sure. You think that there's someone mm -hmm. in. Because a healthy patient doesn't pay. No, I know. But like you have, like, think about how tight of a circle after i mean we went to the moon what was that like 30 40 i don't even know how many years ago and not a single person in since then broke that trust oh, i know that's the weird part right i mean there's just no way not a single i mean just think about if you were let's say we do have the cure for cancer and you're one of the doctors that's in on the we have the cure and your grandmother gets or your mother gets cancer and they're like, dude, we can't give her the cure because no, they, could. I think, they just no, might not yeah, tell anybody. Yeah. I think that they do give her the cure. She lives on because oh. it's your grandmother and everybody else is silenced in whatever form, usually money and or death. And then that's how it becomes a small circle that stays small. Yeah. I don't know. It seems like a lot of things to my whole take on conspiracy theories is basically that it's just way too much to manage. And that's why they would crumble. Like to not go to the moon would be insane. Yeah, that's like Neil Armstrong would have to for his entire life not say anything to anybody about not being on the moon. I think that's very possible. But then, he, but it's not I just. I love conspiracy Neil, theories though. It's not it just Neil weird. Armstrong though. It's literally every single person that's, that was ever associated with that project if it mm -hmm. didn't exist. I mean, that's probably 
200, let's just say the low end, 200 to 250 people that have to be sworn to secrecy for the rest of their existence on earth. Not a single one of them can make a peep. Otherwise, the greatest lie in human history is spoiled. Yeah, but if you think about it, 250 people is not that much. I bet you. But that's it, a lot of that's a lot of life that can happen. Totally. That I is. Know, dude. Maybe they're getting paid an egregious amount of money. But if it were me and I was Neil Armstrong and I was getting paid, they're like, listen, you're going to get this much money every year in a secret bank account. You don't tell a single person or else we're going to kill you. Mm -hmm. If that were me right before I died, I'd be like, never went to the moon, motherfuckers. Yeah, no. same. <laughs> Mic drop, I'm out. Yeah. Absolutely. But I think that they're, I don't know, I just choose to maybe not believe conspiracy theories wholeheartedly, but I also think that conspiracy theories stem from some sort of truth in the mix of it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think conspiracy theories just pull out of nowhere. Like, you're saying these things about the moon. People have reasoning to believe, like, there's no wind on the moon. How is there a flag in the wind? Those kind of things, like, that has to stem from some sort of truth. Yeah. I just like the excitement and also when people are super passionate and you piss them off because you're like, yeah, I believe in that conspiracy theory. And they're like, what do you mean no. you are? And I'm like. Yeah. Alex's brother is, like, like major conspiracy theorist. and like in everything and he'll convince you that like your shoes aren't real <laughs> after like 10 minutes that's it's the person crazy. you want to talk to after you eat an edible that's or a good the time earth is flat oh, oh yeah I've heard like those. he can convince like literally he'll give me an argument about the earth being flat and i'm like do you just <laughs> say hey what happens if you just go in a straight line until you can't go anymore what do you hit a wall or do you keep going around the earth i don't know man i've never done it <laughs> That's my yeah, argument for anybody who says that the earth's flat. Well, then where's the end? If it's flat, was there a big wall at the end like the Truman Show? I was going to say, what if it is? That's exactly what I was just going to say. It's all simulation. Yeah. It's possible. Yeah. Stranger things have happened, my friends. Would you go to Mars if you were asked to be the first person on Mars? Would you take that trip? It takes about eight months to get there. Hell no. 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 Never. Would no you? amount of money could convince me to go to <sighs> Mars. If I was the first person ever in the history of the world, I would say yes. Interesting. No, you wouldn't. Yeah, I would. Right now, if you got a proposal, well, right now I, while we're sitting here. Well, I have a kid. I'd wait. So now all of a sudden you're backtracking on your 100% would. Well, I can't miss the first eight months of my damn kid's life. So then you're lying. I would go because then I would for the rest of eternity... Be the guy who landed on Mars, first person ever. And you know what? That's a fair point. You, I don't think that gets you me going. You died two it times, Sam K. Oh God. <laughs> Sean says this once a week. <laughs> what Go ahead, say? say it again. You died two times. You die when you actually die, and your body's dead, and then you're <laughs> you're in the ground, and then you die when everybody you know forgets your name, and nobody has any memory of you. <laughs> My name's Close Sean that. Booth. It was, yeah. yeah, you die when you physically die, and then you die the last time somebody says your name. Same, same, but That's different. That's deep. It was deep the first 46 times you said have it you to me. Have you heard that yet? Uh, yes. Actually, I think I have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you've said it on this okay, podcast. So Everybody who's deep. listening right now in their car is like, we've also heard it, Booth. <laughs> we get it. I think about that. Yeah. <laughs> Just as often as I think about the Roman Empire. Do you think about the Roman Empire? When I was asked that last week, I thought about the Roman Empire the week before for a BC battle. I didn't realize that men thought about that, but I also just feel like I don't understand the male brain. So I think about what's... the Colosseum often, and like every time I watch a UFC fight and any type of battle or stuff like that, I'm like, that's crazy to think that you would just send people into the Colosseum and you would just fight until your death. So you're thinking about specifically the fighting, not the actual Roman Empire and like the politics and government setup of right. what the roman empire I don't was think that or inventions like i had one guy who's like yeah every time i take a shit i think about the roman empire because they invented indoor plumbing and i'm like wow i'd rather die alone thank you so much for this <laughs> <laughs> this old fashioned. i have to go yeah no i don't think about it like that just the call scene for the most part okay that's fair yeah i uh genuinely don't so i don't think about that and then everybody on tiktok slash the internet slash in general has been trying to figure out what the women version of the Roman Empire is. And I have no proof, but I was talking about this with my friend. And I think for women, it's uh, being murdered. It's crime. 
It's murder. It's either you being murdered, someone breaking in your house and murdering your friend and or listening to murder podcasts about someone else dying or women love serial killers. They love a Ted Bundy moment. And mm-hmm. I just think that women in general are way more aware of death and murder because we kind of have to be in a way. I know that's kind of sad, but I think that that is the women's Roman Empire. That's what somebody was saying the other day. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go down that rabbit hole. Yeah. I was just talking about with my friend. I didn't realize that I had like friends. Well, there you on go. The then it could be a trend on TikTok where guys ask girls how often that they think oh about my being gosh. murdered okay, now and I'm gonna kidnapped. Go down. I didn't know that, that someone else had that opinion. Now I'm excited. Yeah. The absolute worst. We're going to end this podcast with the absolute worst boyfriend that Taylor Swift ever had. Oh, wow. Okay. Can I Google whose her boyfriends have been? Yes. That was not English, by the way. That's what I'm doing right now. Taylor Swift dating history. Cosmopolitan.com. I also think Jake Gyllenhaal was probably her best boyfriend. Jake the Snake. Guy's a stud. This is just weird. John Mayer, like, she looks like she's 12 there. He was 13 years old. Well, is 13 years older than her. The absolute worst boyfriend that Taylor Swift ever had is Joe Jonas. (laughs) Oh, I forgot about him. (laughs) I feel like he's probably uh, the least of the Jonas bros, the Joe bros. Oh, okay. Mm. What about that Middleton guy? Middleton? That, that guy, which guy? Tom, Thomas Middleton, is that right? <laughs> I don't know. I think the absolute worst, I don't know, Joe Jonas is a good one, because I just feel like, ugh, what's the point of that? Harry Styles, that was a good one for her. See, I feel like Harry Styles. Tom and Hiddleston. Hiddleston. Who is that Hiddleston? guy? Is that the rich guy that she was just with that she broke up with in the middle of the Eras tour? Yeah, I go that guy. I don't know who that is, so I'm going to say him. But like, I'm looking at this list. She dated Connor Kennedy. To me, that seems like exactly who Taylor Swift would marry. A Kennedy. Yeah. Like American royalty. For sure. She is in that caliber of dating pool listen say what you will about the girl she has a great roster good for her yeah fantastic roster and that was our podcast today talking about taylor swift's roster we hope you guys enjoyed the show (laughs) make sure you like subscribe give us five stars watch us on youtube uh we appreciate you guys and the support as always team on three team